Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Rise and shine and give God the glory. Good morning, Minister Claire. Good morning, everybody. Happy, happy Sunday on this rainy Sunday, 2021. God bless everybody. Good morning, Jill. Happy Sunday. Good morning. It's raining. I want to be in the bed. <laughs> I did not want to get up this morning, everybody. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Sonia. Good morning, everyone that's getting on. This is truly a sacrifice today. God bless you, Norman Bell. God bless you, sir. Amen. Happy Sunday to everyone that's getting on the line. God bless you, Pastor Faye. Yes, that's my sentiments exactly. I love you all. I wanted to send out a text on Facebook saying we wasn't having church today. <laughs> Good morning, Sharon Early. Amen. This is my sacrifice of praise. Getting up. God bless you, Pamela Jackson. Good morning. Good to have you on today. God bless you, Minister Claire. Happy Sunday. Pray that everyone is doing well. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you, Tanya. Good morning. Yes, good to meet you, Tanya Shabazz. Good morning, uh, Joanne. Oh, in sunny Florida, Sawyer's graduation. Amen. Happy graduation, Sawyer. That's awesome. Enjoy the sun. It's cold and rainy here, Joanne. Good morning, John Lewis. Yes, I am. It's a sleeping weather. I didn't want to get up, but I'm here, so we might as well do what we do for God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank God for life, health, and strength. We thank God for his goodness today. I pray that everyone is doing well in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Marcia. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Amen. Let's give the Lord some likes. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Let's give, little, let's give the Lord some hearts this morning. Hearts of praise this morning, this morning. Give him hearts of praise. Hallelujah. If God's been good to you, let's give him hearts of praise. Yes, and adoration for he's a good, good God. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you, Beverly Sproul. Happy Sunday to you and the family. God bless you, Letty Sloan. Good to see you this morning. Amen. Happy Sunday, people of God. Yes, we want to fill this news feed up with hearts and praise for the Lord. He deserves all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Amen. Amen. That's right, Pastor Faith. He deserves all the glory. God bless you, Brother George from Australia. My brother, I pray that you and your family are well. Amen. Oh, you're welcome for, for the prayers, Jill. You're very welcome. We're going to do some more praying this morning. Yes, give God hearts and likes this morning, hearts of praise. He's worthy of the praise this last Sunday in the month of May. This month have, has just flown by. But we thank God for being here today. We thank God for life, health, and strength. My Dora, God bless you, Dora Young. Happy Sunday to you and the family. Amen. That's good. I'm glad you're all well, George. We love you in Australia. We send God's continued blessings to you and the family and to the country of Australia, that God would just bless that country in Jesus' name. Good morning, Pastor Bev. Happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday on this fourth Sunday of the month. Amen. Good to see my Dora on this morning. Good to see you, Mary Llewellyn. God bless you and your son today in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Yes, yes, yes. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Glory to God. So we just thank God for his goodness this morning. We thank God for his mercy and his grace today in Jesus' name. I pray that everyone is doing well. Um, been a full week last week, but we thank God that he brought us through in Jesus' name. Please share this video this morning. I'm sure there's somebody on your news feed that needs to see this video. So please share this video this morning. Um, 
God bless you, Claudia Carroll. Good to see you on too. Amen. Uh, good to see everyone on this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good morning, Carol. Miss you. Mm. Oh, okay. Father, we just, we, yes, we release God's blessings upon uh, every prayer request that Carol has this morning in Jesus' name. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, we release supernatural healing in Jesus' name. Vane, good to see you. You've been on my mind. Vane, Vane, I'm going to be calling you. I miss you. Amen. Good morning. Let me see what Carol's prayer request is. Do, 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 do. Yes, we pray for Carol's uh, grandson in Jesus' name. Let me see if I can find a prayer request. Let you cover him and keep him this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody saying good morning. I'm trying not to miss a prayer request. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So, oh, good morning, Naira Carter. Good morning, my Doris. Y'all getting on quick this morning. Amen. Oh, fifth Sunday of the month. Thank you, Pastor Bev. Fifth Sunday of the month. It went by so fast. God bless you, Naira. Carter, amen. Yes, we pray. We're going to pray for them too, uh, Norman Bell. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of deaths up here in Rawway, people that we went to school with. So we're going to just pray for all the bereaved families today in Jesus' name that God will cover and keep her. Yes. Yes. Dr. Mike, my son, carpal tunnel on his arms and hands. Father, release uh, supernatural healing. Uh, over Mike's hands in Jesus' name. Father, supernatural healing over Carol's son in Jesus' name. Yes, bring healing and wholeness, Father God, over prayer, every prayer request in Jesus' name for Carol. In Jesus' name, supernatural healing and strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Cassandra. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy, happy Sunday. It's raining out here in New Jersey. It's cold. It feels like winter. But we're going to do like the, the word says, this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer in three minutes. We always start at 8.05. This is our meet and greet time from 7.55 to 8.05. We do our uh, meet and greet time. And God bless you and grandma too, Vane. Give grandma my love in Jesus' name. God bless you, Helena Gentile. God bless you. Blessings to you and your family. God bless you, Sister Gwen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Audrey DeMola. God bless you, Deborah Gaskins. All the great people of God are getting on. Happy Sunday. God bless you, Kay Love. Good morning. Thank you, Vane. Amen. So we just thank God for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace towards all of us. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So we pray that everyone has a nice memorial weekend. We honor all the veterans that have served, those that are still alive and those that have passed on. We honor all the veterans this weekend in Jesus' name for their great, great service to our country. God bless you, Liz Smith. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to continue to pray for Liz Smith. We love you, Liz. Yes, we're going to continue to pray for you and your family, and we will stay connected in Jesus' name. God bless you, Sheila Wright-Peterson. Happy Sunday. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I love you all. Even at the funeral uh, Friday, I felt so special. I could see all my, I ran into all our people that watch us on Facebook Live. And I was like, these people watch me. because, And they came up to me and told me that they watched the Sunday service. So Liz, thanks for spreading the word and telling people about our Facebook Live service on Sundays. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the love from all the great people that were there on Friday at my brother Mark's homegoing service. It was beautiful. It was very anointed. Beautiful, beautiful service. Beautiful homegoing service. Amen. Everything was nice from beginning to end. Yes, thank you, K-Love. I don't know if I saw you, but I'm sure y'all saw me. <laughs> Amen. A lot, a lot, nice seeing a lot of a lot of people's faces that watch us. Amen. God bless you, Maria. Good morning. All right, everybody. It's eight oh five. We're gonna go before the Lord in prayer. Um, and uh, yes, 
Thank you, Naira Carter. Thank you. It was good to see you too. Yes. So we have to. We we will have to meet. Well, we'll be. We're gonna tell you about some good news soon too. So we will have a chance to meet. I wasn't gonna share something. I may share something today. So we'll just see. So let's pray. Good morning, Minister Staff. Good morning, everybody. So Father, we just bless you. We thank you this morning for your goodness, your mercy, and your great grace. We thank you for this another day, Lord. And Father, we thank you how you have carried us through last week, Lord. Last week was very challenging for a lot of us, Lord, in Jesus' name. But Lord, in spite of the challenges, you have brought us through, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, for bringing us through every challenge. We thank you that you're the God who's always there, that you never leave us nor forsake us, Father God. So we come to you this morning. We come boldly before the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and grace to help in our time of need. So, Father, we honor you this morning. We worship you this morning. We thank you for being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And, Father, we just ask you, first of all, to forgive us and cleanse us and wash us in your blood this morning in Jesus' name. Forgive us, Lord, of everything that we have thought, said, done, and spoken that was against your will and against your word. So, Father, we ask that you would have your way in our lives this morning in Jesus' name. And, Father, I pray a special prayer over all the families this morning that are going through a time of bereavement and grief, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, I lift up my sister, uh, Liz Smith, Father God, Elizabeth Smith. We pray for her today that you strengthen her, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, as her husband has gone home to be with the Lord, we thank you, Father God, for covering Liz, for covering her children, for covering her family members on both sides of the family, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you that you're a very present help in our times of trouble. So Father, we thank you for the awesome impact that Mark has made upon uh, the, the, the young people, Father God, everywhere, Father God. We thank you for, for his life, oh God. And we just thank you for uh, the legacy, the great, great legacy that he leaves behind, Father. And I ask that you continue to bless his wife, bless his children, Bless those uh, lives that he's touched, the young people that are now adults that have, that have progressed in their life, Lord. Bless his family and friends, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, we ask that you would cover this uh, zip code, 07065, Lord. Uh, two of my classmates, uh, Greg McLeod and uh, Kim Mitchell, uh, have passed away. But we thank you, Father God, for covering their families, Lord, in Jesus' name. Of uh, the Joyner family, Father God, who, who passed away. So many people that have been hit through this city of Rawway, Father God. Stan Wilkins, Father God, we pray that you cover the families, Lord, in Jesus' name. Those that have named, those that I might not even know, Father, we pray for supernatural strength and grace to every bereaved family member, every bereaved friend, every relative, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you this morning that you are the glory and the lifter of our heads, Lord, in Jesus' name. So we ask that you have your way in our lives today, Father God, and we ask that you bless us and keep us and strengthen us, Lord, and help us to be all that you desire us to be, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I love you all. If you need prayer, please message me or inbox me. I will keep you in prayer. Uh, I know that a lot of us are going through a very challenging time with the loss of loved ones, but I know that God will grace us all and see us all through. I also have a, a, a spiritual mom who went to school for grief counseling. She's a, a therapist. She's a counselor. So if anybody needs that counseling, please let me know and I will connect you with her. And we're just going to believe God for supernatural breakthrough and change. I also want to lift up the picture of Brother Mark, my brother, uh, Brother Mark Damon Smith, uh, Liz's husband. We thank you for him. He just left such an awesome legacy. So we thank God for his life. We thank God for just who he was to so many people. And I pray that God will continue to strengthen all of us. And I want to encourage everybody. This is the time to pray one for another. Pray for people, encourage people, love on people. Let me tell you something, time is short. We're not even promised the next five minutes. We're not even promised the next hour or so. So all the great people of God that I met, uh, Denise White Parish, thank everybody for uh, just meeting you on Friday, even though it was a sad occasion. But we, we honor, we thank God for the life and legacy of Mark Damon Smith, and we honor his wife, and we just thank God for his goodness. So stay in a place of prayer. Pray for people, call people, check on people. And let me tell you something, don't take life for granted. Do not take life for granted. With so many people passing away, even last week, I just began to pray and I said, Lord, spare my life. 
spare my life, not so I can have a good time in the, in the world, not so that I can do this and do that, but Lord, spare my life that I can make an impact in people's lives and lead people to the Lord and teach them how serious it is to really be saved and have a relationship with God. Um, I, I didn't ask God to spare my life for selfish reasons, but let me tell you something. We all need to be about our father's business and whatever God has called you to do or want you to do, we need to be about the Lord's business. Amen. God didn't just place you here on earth to have a good time and to have children and to, to go out and eat and drink and, and uh, go out and party and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we should have a good time in life, but let me tell you something. God placed you here on earth for a purpose and for a reason. And we need to be about our father's business. Amen. I'm not saying not that you can't enjoy your life, but I'm telling you, we need to do what Matthew 6.33 says. Matthew 6.33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto us. So we need to be at a place where we are seeking the face of God. Amen. I wasn't going to share this, but I'm going to share it. I had a very challenging week last week, but God is great. Um, we, we, God has blessed us with a new ministry location. Yes. God has blessed us with a new ministry location. We have been, um, for years we have rented out hotels and we've been in hotels. So, uh, God has blessed our ministry to be, um, at a church now on Saturday nights. We're going to be, um, at Calvary Tabernacle in Cranford, New Jersey, 69 Myrtle, Myrtle uh, Street in Cranford, New Jersey. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be Saturday Night Live. We're still putting everything together. I'm not going to be uh, really doing a lot of advertising on Facebook because now we have to iron out a lot of kinks and get things to the next dimension. But uh, so keep us in prayer. It's 69 Myrtle Street in Cranford, New Jersey. We'll be in the great room. So we're believing God for great things to happen in the great room. Great and mighty things that we know not of. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 33 and 3. It says, come, what does it say? Ask, no. It says, come to me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to be doing some big things, uh, but we're going to be coming in this Saturday night at 6 o'clock. We're going to just start off with prayer and just getting ourselves together and get ourselves acclimated to the building. And uh, we're believing God for big things to happen. We're believing God for musicians and things to come together. But it's a lot of work. Everybody's saying, are you excited, Pastor Mark? I'm like, yeah, I'm excited, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> So we, we want to take it to the next dimension. So we will not be doing Facebook Live on Saturday nights because we want to get, we want, we want it to, when we post it and we share it, we want it to be really uh, nice and really anointed and really running smoothly. So we're going to be getting acclimated to the building and getting set up. But this Saturday night at 6 p.m., we will be starting. Uh, our, we will be having our services at the um, Calvary Tabernacle. Pastor Clem has been phenomenal with us. Um, he's really excited that we're on board. So we're just there to do the kingdom of God. There's still other ministries that fellowship there, and we just want to do our part in the kingdom of God. Amen. We're going to be praying for the ministries that are already there, uh, that everything that we do will be done for the glory and honor of God and for his kingdom. So I solicit your prayers that we would be and do all that God would have us to be, but we will be having Saturday night live service every Saturday night. For starters, it's going to be 6 p.m. until we get acclimated. Once we get everything set up, we may move to 7 p.m., but I will keep you posted. But we're going to start off at 6 p.m. Uh, we're going to have a time of prayer, a time of just getting settled into the building, a time of getting on one accord, a, a time of getting acclimated. And once we iron out everything and things are running smoothly, then we will do a Saturday night live service. Uh, we will record from their Facebook Live, and then we will continue with our Sunday morning service. So our Saturday night service will basically be like a Sunday morning service. We're just going to let the Lord have his way. We're going to pray for people. We're going to love on people. I'm going to teach the uncompromised word of God, and I'm going to let the gifts of the Spirit flow. We're just going to let God have his way. So I solicit your prayers for myself as we step out into this new venture, and we just desire that we be all that God would have us to be. Um, so if you want to come out and join us, just come on out grow with us, learn with us. If, if this ministry has been blessing you, you know, uh, come out on Saturday. We're still going to do a Sunday morning live at 8 a.m. So we're not going to have, that's going to, our Saturday night service will be like a Sunday morning service. So we'll do Saturday nights at six for starters. 
And then our Sunday morning services will still be Facebook Live at 8 a.m. Amen. So, you know, you can't come out of the pandemic doing the same old things. God wants to do something new, something fresh, something different. You can't go back to doing what you were doing before the pandemic. The Bible says you can't put new wine and old wineskins. So we're just believing God for a move of God. I still work with some other ministries on Sunday mornings. I still minister out on Sunday mornings. So uh, we will still meet Saturday nights at 6 p.m. For starters, as we move forward, we may change at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then on Sunday mornings, we will still do our Facebook live service at 8 a.m. Um, and th yeah, that's where we are. So keep us in your prayers. We love you and we're excited about this move, but keep us in your prayers. Amen. All right. I wasn't going to share it, but it just came on me to share it. So with all I've been going through, I need to share it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But God's got us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Uh, before I came to church this morning, I was so blessed by uh, Joel Osteen's message. If you can listen to Joel Osteen this morning at nine o'clock on channel five, listen to his message. It's very encouraging. It's uh, talking about the blessing and how when the blessing of God is upon you, nobody can come against you when the blessing is on you. And I believe the blessing is upon our listeners on this Sunday morning live. So if you can today, make sure you listen to Joe Osteen. If you don't make it at 9 a.m., uh, find out on your TV where you can watch it. But watch today's Joe Osteen message. It will encourage your heart. Amen. All right, I'm going to strive to finish this message. I've been trying to finish for the past three weeks, but um, I'm going to continue. I'm going to finish up today. Ten things we don't want to say, and ten things we do want to say. Ten things we don't want to say, and ten things we do want to say. I'm going to go over the first seven that we went over, and I'm going to strive to finish the new ones. Amen. And I'm just I just want to encourage you because as Christians, sometimes we don't always say the right thing. Amen. One of our leaders last night, she ministered Maria. She did a phenomenal job. She was talking about watching your garden and, and, and watching what you say and watching what comes out of your mouth. Amen. So we as Christians, we have to watch what we say. And you know when we really have to watch what we say? When we're upset, when we're angry. When people have done us wrong, amen. I'm so glad I have a safe, I, I'm going to say this, because I want to help you. Everything I go through in life, it's to help somebody else. And I want to I want to thank God that I have a safe group of leaders at my ministry, that when I'm going through some things, that I can come to them in confidence and get it off my chest, amen. We all need somebody that we can talk to. You can't make it in this life by yourself. I'm going to say that again. You cannot make it in this life by yourself. You need one or two people that you can confide in, that you can talk to, or a group of people that have your back that you can talk to so you can get things out of your heart. Amen? Even when you're hurting or when people have hurt you, you need people you can talk things to. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. So we are not an island. We can't make it in this journey by ourselves. But we need people that we can share our hearts with, that we can share the things that we're going through with. And so we can um, make sure that our heart is right, our motive is right, and someone that can check us and say, you know what, Pastor Mark, you were right. Or you know what, Pastor Mark, you were wrong. Or you know what I'm saying? So don't just have yes people around you. Have people around you that have wisdom that can tell you the right thing. You don't just need yes people around you. You need people around you that can tell you the right things. Yes. Amen. So I want you to know that we all need people that we can talk to when we're sad, when we're when we're going through things, when we're going through personal things, when we're going through ministry challenges. Let me tell you something. Everything in ministry is not uh, not peaches and cream. You have challenges in ministry. You have challenges with other leaders. You have challenges in this life, but you have to keep a pure heart and pure motives, and you always want to respond according to the word of God. You don't want to respond in the flesh. You want to respond in the spirit of God. Amen. In the multitude of counsel, there is safety. That's true. Amen. So you need people around you so you don't fly off the handle, so you don't cuss people out. Y'all not saying nothing. So you don't walk around with anger and unforgiveness. You need people around you so you can say things off and get it off your chest and get it out of your heart. Amen. I'm going to say it again. You need to get things out of your heart. Amen. Anger, unforgiveness, resentment, grudges. 
Some of my strong ladies watching, you might not say nothing, but you roll your eyes. <laughs> you might not say nothing, but you might suck your teeth. Amen. Your body language uh, says it all. Amen. So you got to come to a place where you get rid of that stuff and where you're free. I see Audrey, Audrey Tamola gave me thumbs up. Amen. Some of us people are strong on here. Some of my women are strong and you don't have to say nothing, but your attitude says it all. <laughs> that's right, Pastor Bev, don't hold it in. You got to come to a place where you're free. And that's how I'm able to stay free. I have strong leaders in my ministry that have my back and strong friends that I can bounce things off of and share things with so I can get it out of my heart. So when I come and preach and teach the word of God, I'm not preaching in anger. I'm not preaching mad. I'm not preaching with a grudge. I'm not smiling in your face and stabbing you in the back. Amen. Glory to God. So you got to be real. We want to be real Christians. I'm not saying as Christians, we don't go through things, but you need people. You need a safe uh, haven around. You need people around you that can check you and help you and that you can bounce things off. Of. Amen. Let me take a sip to that. Glory to God. And one thing I'm learning, Lord said, he said, Mark, if you can go through the challenges that you go through, he said, it's going to give you a greater anointing. And so when you go through things and you go through rejection, you go through hurt, you go through betrayal. Let me tell you something. When you stick with God, when you get up and take that microphone, God's going to take your anointing to another level, to another dimension. Because see, people don't know what you go through behind the scenes. And they don't know what you go through. And when you go through with God, he takes you up. He turns that anointing up. He turns that power up because you stood strong. You took a licking, but you kept on ticking. Amen. Glory to God. But let me tell you something. The enemy always wants you to give up. The enemy wants you to quit. He wants you to stop. But the devil is a liar. We are a, we are a unstoppable force. Somebody type in, I'm an unstoppable force. We are an unstoppable force that cannot be reckoned with. Amen. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, what will happen? The Lord will lift up a standard against him. When the enemy comes against you one way, he's got to flee seven ways. You have to stand on the word. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Um, uh, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Let me tell you something. You better keep your mouth off of God's people. Keep your mouth off of God's, uh, his servants. Amen. Glory to God. Even leaders coming against leaders or leaders mad at me. That should not be. We are all on the same team. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we want to, we want, we want to come out of this baby, uh, Christianity out of this milk stage and, and press into the things of God. Press into the things of God. And you are, you are an unstoppable force because the greater one lives on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have to know who you are in the body of Christ. You have to know what God has called you to do. And just because you're anointed does not mean you're not going to go through. Just because you're anointed does not mean people are not going to like you. You have to be still and know that God is God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to, um, so 10 things we don't want to say, 10 things we do want to say. And I want to tell you that it's very hard and very challenging. You have to come to a place of maturity. It's hard to say the right thing when wrong things are happening to you. I'm going to say that again. It's hard to say the right things when people are coming against you. It's hard to say the right things when, uh, Things come against your, your, your emotions, but you have to rise up. You have to come to a place of maturity and speak what thus saith the Lord and speak his word. Amen. Glory to God. All right. So uh, the first thing we don't want to say is, number one, we don't want to say I'm broke, busted and disgusted, and I ain't got no money. No, don't say that. You say Philippians 419, but my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Glory to God. So if, if you're in a challenge, if, if you're in, if you don't have the finances that you want to have, it's okay to say I'm between blessings, but do not declare and decree over your life. I'm broke, busted and disgusted, and I ain't got no money. That's a terrible confession. We confess the word of God. Glory to God. Philippians 419. God is the God that supplies all of your needs, excuse me, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Number two, do not say I'm sick, depressed, oppressed, hurting, pain, don't feel well. The more you say you're sick, the sicker you're going to feel. 
But you have to learn to say what the word of God says. You say uh, Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. I'm not saying deny what you're going through. I'm not saying, but you, you know, speak life over your body in the midst of how you feel. You have to speak the life over your body. Even if you have to take medication, take your medication and take it in Jesus' name. Glory to God. So stop speaking defeat over yourselves and speak the word of God. It's okay to tell your doctor what's going on in your body. It's okay because there's a spiritual force and a natural force. So there are things that you need to do naturally and the things you need to do spiritually. So I'm not saying be in denial. And I'm not saying if you're depressed, not to say you're depressed or going through, but if you need, if you need help, get you some help so you can come out of the depression. Amen. Don't just say I'm depressed, but you're not doing anything about it. You know, you have to do the natural things to do. Talk to a counselor, get you some help and then do the spiritual things that you need to do. Amen. And then I want to read Psalm 103 verses one through five. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who heals all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. I love that scripture for myself. I'm always declaring and decreeing that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. This year I will be 57 years old. I don't want to look 57. I thank you, Lord, that I look 35 and under. <laughs> Somebody type in 35 and under. Amen. I know y'all say, oh, you don't look like that. that's good. I declare, I declare youth. I don't speak. I'm getting old. I'm looking old. I'm acting old. No, I speak youth over my life. Amen. Do I get amen? All right. That's right. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you think old, you're going to be old. If you think young, you'll be young. Thank you, K-Love. If you think young, you'll be young. And be around young people. Don't be around pe old people all the time. You know, I know that's our wisdom, but 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 be around people that keep you young. Amen. And youthful. Glory to God. Amen. 35 and under. Some of my people that's over 35, y'all receiving that for yourself. I know you are. Amen. What came to my mind as I was talking about this, you got to take your natural medicine and take your spiritual medicine. That's good. You take your natural medicine, whatever your doctor diagnoses to you, and you take it in Jesus' name, but you take your spiritual medicine, which is the word of God. So you do the natural and the spiritual. Somebody type in natural medicine and spiritual medicine. Amen. Don't just take your natural medicine and you ain't speaking the word over yourself. You're not praying over yourself. You're not speaking life over yourself. You're not declaring and decreeing God's blessings over yourself. No, do the natural and the spiritual. Some people miss it because they do the spiritual and they don't do the natural. Or they do the natural and don't do the spiritual. You have to know what realm to flow in. Some people have died before their times because they were believing God for healing and they were speaking the word, but they didn't take their natural medicine. Amen. Or they stopped taking medicine or they never went to the doctor to get whatever treatment they needed. You have to work hand in hand or you will be home to be with the Lord quicker than you're supposed to be home. Amen. It's got to be a balance. Yes. So they take your natural medicine and your spiritual medicine and do it, do the things that you can do to bring help, <coughs> health and healing to your body. Amen. Glory to God. If you know you ain't supposed to be eating pork chops, don't just be quoting scriptures. Put that pork down. Amen. Put those salty things down. Drink more water. Amen. All right. I ain't going to mess with y'all food today. Number three. Uh, the third thing we shouldn't say, I'm tired or I'm sick and tired of being tired. Sometimes I'm guilty of saying that. And I, we have to say what Galatians 6, 9 says. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let the weak or the tired say I'm strong. And let the tired get you some rest. Don't be so, if you need, if you say, if you're tired, go get you some rest. Y'all got quiet on me. Where'd y'all go? Okay. Get you some rest. Amen. Somebody type in rest. 
Get you some rest. Stop trying to do everything for everybody and balance out what you need to do. Do some things one day. Do some things. Stop trying to do everything in one hour. Amen. You're not as young as you used to be. Amen. You don't have the same energy you used to have. So, so balance out what you need to do. Do some things one day. Do some things another day. Uh, budget out. Balance out some things you have to do. You got to get your rest. Rest is important. Oh, I dropped my towel. Hold on. I need my towel. Rest is important. Jill said I'm guilty of that. Let me let me take a little sidebar. Your rest is important. Your sleep is important. Drinking water is important. Eating pretty healthy, as, as healthy as you can, is important. Amen? You don't want to eat bad seven days a week. All right. So having some me time is important. Shutting down is important because sometimes you need, especially as a caregiver or, or in ministry, you got to have some time. You got to have time to unwind. That's a good word. Somebody type in time to unwind. That's okay. Time to unwind. On your rest days, some of you some of you are such workaholics that even on your days off, you're working. Take you some time off. Amen. Yes, self-care is very important. If you don't take care of yourself, you will be no good to anybody else, especially to my women out here. My women that fix people. Amen. <laughs> you, my women that fix people. You got to take time. You can't be everything to everybody. My strong mothers, my mothers, my grandmothers, my, my fixers, my fixer doers. You know what I'm saying? I saw that K-Love. Uh -huh. Time for some wine. I got you, but I know what you meant. <laughs> yes, time to unwind. Amen, Now, Ricardo. Time to unwind. Yes, Pastor Beth, exercise is important. Walk a little bit. Walk. Don't just walk to the refrigerator. Walk a little bit. Get you some walking in. Amen. Even if you go to the store, don't park all the way up under the handicap sign at the grocery store. Park away from the handicap sign and get you some walking in. Even if it's small walks, walk. Walk, get you some walking in. Amen. Walking is really good. Walking relieves a lot of stress too. Amen. All right. So if you're tired, get you some rest. Number four, stop saying I have no joy. I have no joy. No. Declare and decree Nehemiah 8.10. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. Declare the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you know what else? I'm going to tell you something practical to do. Watch something funny on TV. Watch a funny video. Watch things that make you laugh. A merry heart does good like a medicine. A merry heart does good like a medicine. I love to watch funny videos or funny things. You need to laugh sometimes. You know, lighten your load. Laugh a little bit. Get, you, get with some friends that make you laugh. Laughter is good for the soul. Amen. Number five, peace. Stop saying you don't have you don't have peace. The Prince of Peace, Jesus, wants you to have peace. Now, I know these things seem real practical, real, real baby or real ABC, but we miss it in the small things. We really do miss it in the small things of life. We're like, oh, you know what? Give me a deep word. I want a deep word. I want a rhema word. But then you're getting a deep word, but you're miserable naturally. You're, you're not. You're miserable. You're saying all the wrong things. You have a negative attitude. You have a negative mindset, but you want a deeper word. No, we miss it in the small and the practical. Amen. God. Okay. Number five is peace. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Amen. So number one, don't say I'm broke, busted, and disgusted. Uh, release Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Number two, don't say I'm sick, depressed, oppressed, hurt, pain, don't feel well. Declare and decree Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with him by his stripes I'm healed. Declare and decree Psalm 103, 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are his benefits? Who forgives all thy iniquities? Who heals all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies thy mouth or thy life with good things? And I release this morning that God will satisfy your lives and your mouths with good things because every good and perfect gift 
comes from above. So I release the good things of God. I release the surprises of God. I release the blessings of the Lord to chase you down in Jesus name to those that have been grieving and mourning and those that have, have seen loss even recently. I speak the good things of God. I speak encouragement to you this morning. I speak strength to you today. I declare and decree that you shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. I break the power of depression and oppression over your life in Jesus name. You will not go into a funk. You will not be depressed. You will not be oppressed. You will rise up. You will rise and shine and give God glory in Jesus name. I prophesy good things in your life, good things with your children, good things over your finances, good things on your job, good things in your business. I prophesy the good things of God in your life in your wallet, in your checking account, in your savings account, in your personal life, in your physical bodies. I prophesy the goodness of God into your life. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Yes, Jacqueline Custis, by his stripes, you're healed. In Jesus' name, glory to God. I prophesy good things. Some of you have got bad news and bad breaks in life, but I reverse the curse of bad and I prophesy the good things of God to overwhelm you. The blessing of the Lord to chase you down, that your cup will run over. I prophesy Ephesians 3.20 that says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask, think, or imagine according to the power or the faith that works in you. In Jesus' name. That's right. When you hear a prophetic word, you hear a word of exhortation, you say, I receive it in Jesus' name. Mm. Even if you don't see it, you receive it in your spirit. Glory to God. Even though craziness may be around you, you receive it in your spirit in Jesus' name. Let's give God praise. That's right. My ladder shall be greater. Glory to God. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. Number three, stop saying I'm tired and I'm sick and tired of being tired. Re release Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if I faint not. Declare and decree that I shall reap if I don't faint, quit, and give up. Things are changing. Things are turning. My best days are before me. My worst days are behind me. In Jesus' name, declare and decree the word of God. God's word never returns to him void. Glory to God. Number four, don't say I have no joy. Declare and dec decree from the rooftop. Nehemiah 8.10, for the joy of the Lord is my strength. Glory to God. I will not lay in this bed and be depressed. I will not stay in this house and the curtains are closed. I will open these curtains. I will let the sun shine in and I will let the S-O-N shine in my life. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Peace, the Prince of Peace. Don't say you don't have peace. Declare and decree Isaiah 26 and 3. Lord, I thank you that you keep me in perfect peace as I keep my mind stayed on you. I don't keep my mind on the circumstances. I don't keep my mind on those that have been talking about me. I don't keep my mind on those that did me dirty. I don't keep my mind on those that have been grimy. I love that word. My people say grimy. <laughs> Can you type in grimy? People do you grimy. I keep my mind on you in Jesus name. Glory to God. Somebody type in don't be grimy. Some Christians try to be grimy. Glory to God. I thank God for him saving me because I had a mama that was strong and a mama that would come back. So I got a little salty. I got a little salty mouth, but I'll keep it under the blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You got to keep it up. That's right. You know, you know how to spell it, Liz. Mm -mm -mm. Don't be grimy. <laughs> Some grimy Christians. Don't be grimy. All right. Number six. Number six, stop saying I can't. Stop saying I can't. God wants to use you. God's got a plan for your life. God's got a purpose for your life. And you say I can't. I know one thing they were saying that my brother Mark Damon came against was when people give excuses. Stop giving God excuses. Stop saying excuses over why you can't. The devil is a liar. You can do it in Jesus' name. Stop giving excuses. Stop saying I can't. What should you say? Philippians 4.19, 4.13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Glory to God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Stop saying you can't. 
say that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. All right, number seven. I got stuck here last week. Uh, I couldn't get off it last week. Number seven, lonely. Stop saying you're lonely. And some of you may feel lonely. I'm a single man. Sometimes I feel lonely. Some, sometimes you could be married and feel lonely. Sometimes you could be in a room with a whole lot of people and still feel lonely. Married people feel lonely. But I want to tell you, stop stop saying you're lonely. You start declaring and decreeing that you, Lord, will fill every void and meet every need in my life in Jesus' name. You may have moments of loneliness, but you're not lonely or you're not alone. The Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Glory to God. So we have to remember what God's word says in Hebrews 13, 5. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Someone may have left you. Someone may have forsaken you, but the Lord will never, ever leave you nor forsake you. And last week it came out of my spirit. I've been saying it uh, for a, little, a couple of days. It's been in my spirit that even when you feel lonely, and you feel down in your spirit. There's a one word prayer that you can pray. And that one word prayer is Jesus. Glory to God. Sometimes you may feel lonely. You don't feel like saying a long prayer. And you can't say a long prayer. But release the name of Jesus. Jesus. Release the word, the name of Jesus. Amen. Number eight. This is a new one. Number eight. Don't gossip. Don't gossip. Help us all. Don't gossip. I always say Christians don't gossip. We just share. <laughs> so don't gossip. Number eight, don't gossip. But Ephesians 4, 29 says, do not, let, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Do not gossip. I know it's hard to, for my talkers not to gossip. I know we like juicy news, but help us, Lord, not to gossip. Okay, so uh, these are not going to go over too big because, uh, you know, we got to train our mouth. So these, ain't, I'm probably going to get too many hearts and likes on these. But Ephesians 4.29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for your, for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Second scripture under gossip is James 1.26. Those who consider th themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. So we don't want to be talking all the time. Amen. The amens went down because I'm stepping on some toes. <laughs> all right. Under gossip, James 4.11. Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. Amen. Proverbs eleven thirteen: a gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. Let me tell you something. Keep people's secrets. If people confide in you, don't tell their secrets. If people trust you enough to confide in you, keep their secrets. Amen. Be loyal to them. I don't care how deep, dark, dirty, and juicy it may be to your flesh. Keep people's secrets. It goes a long way. Amen. As leaders, keep people's secrets. What people tell you in confidence, keep it between you, them, and God. God loves it when you are loyal and faithful to what people tell you. Amen. Glory to God. A gossip goes around. Listen to this, y'all. A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep and keep a confidence. That's Proverbs 11, 13 from the NIV and from the New Living Translation. So don't be a gossip. Don't be a Christian anointed gossip. And we all have mouths, so we all have to work on that. We have to work on our mouths. Amen. I ain't telling you that because I'm I've aced it, but I'm telling you that because we have to work on that. But keep people secret. I can keep people secrets. Amen. You keep people secrets. It goes a long way. The last scripture for gossip is Proverbs 18:8. 8. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. Amen. So let's work on our mouths. Let's not gossip. If people come to you in confidence, keep their secrets. Keep it between you and them in Jesus' name. Amen. That will destroy friendships and a whole lot of stuff if you do that. All right, number nine, don't speak death. 
I love this. Don't speak death. Don't murmur and complain. Don't uh, don't say I can't remember anything. A lot of you say I can't remember anything. Watch what you say over yourselves. Stop saying I'm forgetful. Stop saying I'll never have this or that. Stop saying I'll never have a job. This is some good wisdom. I'm, just, I'm trying to help you all. I'm closing out this series today. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't speak death. Don't murmur and complain. This is all under number nine. Number nine is don't speak death. But I'm giving you some good wisdom. I'm giving you something to challenge you. Amen. So don't speak death, number nine. Don't Number one, don't murmur and complain. Under number nine, don't murmur. Watch murmuring and complaining. Number two, stop saying I can't remember anything. If you say you can't remember anything, you won't remember anything. Number three, stop saying I'm forgetful. Say, Holy Spirit, I thank you for bringing all things back to my remembrance in Jesus' name. Sometimes I'll see people from school and I'll forget their name. And I'll be like, Holy Spirit, bring their name back, and then it'll come back to me. So rely on the Holy Spirit to bring all things back to your remembrance. That's the scripture. Uh, stop saying, I'll never have this or that. Some of you defeat your own selves by the words that come out your mouth. Some of you say, I'll never have a good husband. I'll never have a good wife. I'll never have a nice place. I'll never. And if you keep saying you'll never, you never will because you're speaking death over your situation. You're speaking death over what you uh, what you believe in God for. You're speaking death. But call those things that be not as though they were. Speak life. I think that's Romans 4.17, calling those things that be not as though they were. What does that mean, Pastor Mark? That means when you're not feeling your best, you speak over yourself. I thank you, Lord. I'm getting better and better and stronger and stronger each day in Jesus' name. You may not be feeling your best, but you say, Lord, I thank you that by your stripes, I'm healed. You may be feeling weak in your body, but with everything within you, say, I thank you, Lord. I'm getting better. I'm feeling stronger in Jesus' name. You got, you got to speak those faith-filled words. S speak faith-filled words. Amen. Stop saying I'll never have a job. This is good right here. Don't speak the problem. Speak the answer. Don't speak the problem. Speak the answer. Amen. If you believe in God for a job, don't say I'll never find a job. Say, I thank you, Lord, for giving me a good job with good benefits in Jesus name. Amen. OK, scripture reference. Uh, don't speak death. Do speak life over yourself. Speak life over yourself. Don't wait for a preacher or for somebody to speak it over. You speak it over yourself. Oh, I'll wait for my pastor. The pastor may not feel like speaking nothing over you today. Mm -mm. Speak life over yourself. Speak life over your children. Speak life over your grandchildren. I don't care what they're doing. You speak life. God's given you power and dominion to speak life over them. Sometimes we put ourselves down, our children down, our grandchildren down, our husbands down, our families and friends down. No, speak life over them. Speak life. Speak life. Yes. Liz said, don't speak the problem. Speak the answer. That's a word, Pastor. Yes. Don't speak the problem. Speak the answer. Pastor Mark, I got all these bills. So what you do? Say, Lord, I thank you that you're my Jehovah Jireh. You're my provider. I thank you, Lord, that these lights ain't getting cut off. I thank you, Lord, that nothing's getting cut off in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you meet every need. My phone bill, my light bill, my rent, my mortgage. I thank you that you, you meet every need in my life in Jesus' name. And then stop shopping all that. Stop, stop wasting money and pay the bills. Amen. Speak life into yourself. Yes. Okay, and number 10, our last one, is that we do it all by faith. Everything I told you, you do it by faith. None of us have arrived. None of us are perfect. None of us have done all 10 of these things. We do it by faith. Amen. Amen. We do it all by faith. So here's the three scriptures for number 10. We do it all by faith and then I'm done. Number one, Mark eleven twenty four. 24. It says, therefore, I say unto you, 
what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Write it down. Excuse me. Mark eleven twenty four. We do it all by faith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Amen. Glory to God. Matthew 17, 20, the second scripture. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, a mustard seed is a very small seed. You shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. With God, all things are possible. Glory to God. With God, you got to believe God. And from the New Living Translation, it says, you don't have enough faith. Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. If you have had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Oh, I got more scriptures. All right, Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Ephesians 3.20 Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works in us. Amen. Glory to God. I think I might go over these scriptures again next week because I want to stir our faith. But I want to give you all 10 points. But the faith, because I, I may teach this next week about the faith, because um, I want to teach a balance with that faith. Because sometimes we teach faith, but it's not balance. But I want you to I want you to know what you do, what you should do in the natural realm and then what you should do in the spiritual realm. So I think next week I'm going to pick up on faith. And share those scriptures and teach that faith in a balance. Amen. All right, I'm done for today. I did give you all the 10 points. Um, so we thank and praise God. If you miss some, go back to the beginning of this video and you will be able to hear them again. Um, so next week, I probably will close this out. Well, I close it out today, but I'm going to go over 10 about faith because sometimes we hear faith, but we don't really get faith. And I want to teach faith in a balance. Because you, in faith, you got to have a balance. You just, you got to do natural things and spiritual things. It's just like saying, I believe God for a job. <coughs> Excuse me. I believe God for a job, but you, you can't stay home and believe God for a job. You got to apply for a job. The job ain't going to just come and knock on your door. You can't pray. I heard T.D. Jake say this last week. You can't pray. Just pray. You have to pray and then you got to put action to it. Faith without works is dead. Glory to God. So you have to have faith, but then you got to do some things in the natural realm. So I'm going to talk about that next week. Beverly Sproul, good to have you on. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Let's give God praise. I'm done. Hallelujah. I pray that this message blessed you today. 10 things we don't want to say and 10 things we do want to say. And whatever your thing is you need to work on, work on it this morning in Jesus' name. God bless you, Maria. Good to see you. Mama Maria, blessings to you and Papa Greg. In Jesus' name, I miss you too. So I'm done. It's 8.53 a.m. I'm going to pray us out. I pray that you have, uh, have a phenomenal weekend. We give a shout out to all of the veterans on this Memorial Weekend. All those that have served our country, we thank God for those that have passed on and those that are still alive and well. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this time and your presence. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your great grace. And, Lord, help us to be doers of your word and not just hearers in Jesus' name. And I just release your strength upon every listener today that you bless them, that you cover them, that you keep them, that you let your perfect will be done in their lives. I love all of our Facebook family, Father God. Bless them and cover them and keep them. And I believe one day soon that I will meet them in Cranford that they will come on a Saturday night for service and that I will meet them and that we will have a good time praising and worshiping you. Bless every listener on here today, Father God. Give them a blessed weekend and cover them in your blood. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Love you all. Have a blessed weekend. Woo woo. I love you all. With the love of the Lord, please keep me in your prayers as we continue to move on in our new venture, our new location. Keep us in your prayers that we will uh, continue to do what God has called us to do. Uh, my assignment is to really press into the more of God and to be and do all that he's called me to do to bless the body of Christ worldwide and to bless his people in Jesus name. Amen. I love you. Let's fill this for the next few minutes. Let's fill this hearts up and likes with, with pra praises for God. Let's give God praise. Amen. 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 Let's fill this news feed up with praise. I'm on my way to Asbury Park. Uh, to bless the chapel today. So we thank God for Asbury Park. We bless First Lady Grant. We bless uh, Elder Derek Grant, all the members and family. I'll be down there shortly. So we just believe in God for a phenomenal time. Have a blessed weekend. I love you all and I will be in touch. Amen. Keep us in your prayers as we're moving to Cranford, New Jersey. Calvary Tabernacle, 69 Myrtle Street, Cranford, New Jersey. I love you with the love of the Lord. Have a phenomenal day in Jesus' Matchless name. Love you.